here now, son? I've been here since 2012. 2012, so that's six years. Yes, sir. And y'all know Tony runs the sound. You hear me call his name a lot, right? <laughs> but um, a lot of these young people sold out and gave up everything. And their parents persecute them, some of them. And you just need to hear their amazing testimonies. But they have given up everything to follow Jesus. And I want you to hear that. That's right. You can give them a great big God bless you. I'm showing you across the world what you are sponsoring when you sow money into this campus for the harvest. Amen. It's just ringing up here. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, sir, I honor you. Thank you so much. I have, since the moment I had got saved, I've been praying for a, a spiritual father who had more than just opinion, but someone who had truth and the, the truth of God. And that is what I've received since I've been here is the truth of God. You don't give anything opinion. You give everything from the face of God. Exactly. I want you to lower the sound on the music a little bit so we can hear. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Even from my first opportunity when I had a chance to speak with you, one of the first times, I remember you had prophesied over me, and I didn't know you well at that time. You didn't know me, and you told me, you said, son, the Lord is going to come to you very soon. And you, you, at the same moment, you also spoke to me about my destiny, and I had never heard a man of God who told me that Jesus would come to me and appear to me but just as you said, shortly after that, Jesus did come to me and he did appear to me. And that's something that I had been looking for and why God led me to this ministry. Wow, that's amazing. Give God the glory for that. <clears throat> so you saw Jesus. You yes, saw sir. Him in the white robe. Yes, sir. I didn't see the robe, sir. I saw his hand. His hand was something that he really emphasized to me in the dream. In the dream. Yes, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. go on. Yes, sir. And, um, but even before coming here, I know... I was going through such a time in my life. I was, um, I was actually in a band. Um, I was in a signed band, and um, we actually had a million dollar contract. All we had to do was just sign it. That's all we had to do. And at that moment in time, the Lord really began putting on my heart. Because the one thing that I realized is so many parents and so many people say that we were brainwashed to come here, that you know we were conned or whatever it may be, or the Jesus visiting face to face is not real, but that was a hunger in my heart even before I came here. Wow. That, you know, I was in my band and even... I want you to stand up here and tell yes, your sir. Tell, talk to them. Yes. And... Give him a great big God bless you. Thank you. Even before I came here, there was a hunger in my heart to see Jesus. I remember I was in my band. We were, we were playing shows. We had a million dollar contract. All we had to do was just sign it at that point in time. But we were scouting out different labels we went to go for. And... I remember at that point in time, the Lord really put it on my heart to start seeking after him, to start really chasing after him. And I prayed a prayer in my heart to, for the Lord to show me that he didn't want me there anymore, that he wanted me to follow God. And when I was there, we had a showcase. It was here in Detroit, Michigan. The label that was going to sign us, if they signed us in that thing, they were going to relocate here into Detroit. The mayor was supposed to be there and everything like that. It was a huge showcase. But the Lord put it on my heart to start following him and to give that up. And I prayed for a sign from him. I said, Lord, if you don't want me here, show me in a way that you don't want me here. And during that showcase, my keyboard, I play keys, it completely malfunctioned and went out. And I heard the audible voice of the Lord for the first time and told me that I would see as many souls saved as the dollars that we were going to make. And I began praying at that point in time. So nobody told me to come here. I gave all that up and I started seeking God and I started being passionate for him. And at that time, I was hungry. I went to different churches, and I, I was seeking out, and I read inside Psalms where it said, Lord, don't hide your face from me, where King David prayed that. And the churches, they were praying, let me see angels. And I said, I want to see you face to face, Jesus. I didn't hear any man tell me that. I read the word of God and heard about face to face appearances from Jesus. Nobody conned me. Nobody brainwashed me into that. And the reason I'm saying that is because so many people want to accuse of that. But... So I started seeking after his face, and my pastor at the time started teaching me, you can't see God and live. So I started praying, Lord, hide your face from me. I don't want to see your face. <laughs> but it was so silly, even after reading the word of God. But I wanted to see his face. And then that was when a good friend of mine, he gave me the book, Face to Face Appearances from Jesus. 
I read that book, Apostle Taylor did prophesy to me and I did see Jesus face to face. I was going through so much hurt at that time. I was going through so much torment. The church I was going to was so judgmental. I felt condemned. I was praying for the grace of God and his judgments. And in that dream, the Lord came to me. I appeared before him in heaven and he showed me his judgments, but he also showed me his grace. And he spoke to me about my destiny, the same destiny that Apostle Taylor had prophesied to me just a week or two before that. And it was on Passover out of all days. So that changed my life forever. That was the, the pinnacle moment of my life. I knew at that point in time that I had to be here. And the thing that I thought was so amazing too is after time, I knew who Apostle was after that moment. But I said, Lord, give me a sign that you want me to be full-time here in this ministry. I left it all the way up to the Lord. He gave me dreams about it. But I said, Lord, if you want me here, speak to the man of God and tell him that for me, that it's time for me to come full-time. So I put, I, said, I put a demand on God. I laid out specifically how I was looking for the sign from him. I remember at that time we were traveling back and forth between St. Louis and Michigan. And we went down to St. Louis. And it was so funny because it was after a service and Apostle Taylor, he looked over to one of the other staff members and said, I believe it's time for you to relocate and become full time. And he said nothing to me. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe the Lord doesn't want me to be full time. <laughs> but it was probably about 15 minutes or 20 minutes later he looked at me and he said, son, the Lord is telling me as well, it's time for you to become full-time as well. <laughs> so this, this is not just a man that was telling me that this was God operating through him. And it was all signs from God. And since I've been here, my life has been changed. I have been seeing the miracles because I know that we've been here. I've been praying and seeking to be under pastors, but nothing was happening. But of course, as we've heard Apostle Taylor's in teaching on inheritance by lineage, as soon as I came here and, and just submitted, I came into one service, just one service where he was preaching, one of them. And I remember he was on stage and he was telling the people about, go back to your doctor because you are healed. That lump is not going to be there. Just being in one service with him. And I just, I, I, and I honored what he was doing. And I went back to a friend. He was on drugs. He had cancer. He, um, he just got diagnosed with cancer. It was actually my sister's ex-boyfriend. I didn't like him very much, so I really didn't want to talk with him. But anyways, I found out he had cancer. I went and prayed for him, and I just followed exactly what Apostle Taylor told us to do. He said, go out and pray for people. In just one service, I've prayed for many people before. I went out, and within a week's worth of time of him being diagnosed with cancer, he was delivered from drugs, he was saved, and the, he went back. The tumor was completely gone in his body. He was completely healed, and his life is changed now. He is saved. And I'm so thankful for that because it's so, being here, we see so many miracles that take place. It, it's just so absolutely amazing. And Apostle Taylor, he always knows the right word at the right time. Whenever, whenever we're feeling down, anything like that, he always knows when to reach out and to encourage us. The thing that amazes me the most is the thousands of people, the hundreds of thousands, of, the millions of people connected to this, he always knows when to reach out and when we need a word from God. And he will reach out and be a true father. We can ask him questions and there's never a moment where we don't have an opportunity to come before him as a father, even with the weight of the world on his shoulders. And I'm so appreciative of that because no matter what we're going through, he hears from God and he will seek God on our behalf and hear answers from God for us. And I just want to share one more testimony that I thought was so amazing. Is the mir Speaking of the miracles, I remember one time, uh, myself and another minister, we were on the streets doing evangelism. And something that really touched my heart was we had been believing to see people be saved. We've been believing to see the miracles. And my heart really went out for them. Just to want to see them. I saw Apostle Taylor praying for the sick. He was in the people coming up there and how their lives were changed. And there were so many people that were out there who were hurting. And then I remember one of the ministers and I, we had went out in the streets to go see, the, the, um, to, to go pray for the people. There was a young girl, she was 14 years old. She was smoking a cigarette on the side of the road and during one of the street fairs around here. We had went up to her and started talking to her. And as we began, she began to, just, you could see that her countenance change. And we asked her, she said, we said, do you feel something right now? She said, yeah, I feel, I feel heat in my body. I, I feel joy. And we told her how that's God. That's the Holy Spirit touching her right at that moment in time. And after that moment, 
we began to pray for her and she got touched from God. She gave her life to Jesus then and there on that street and got saved. And I thank God for that. Yes, and so I honor Apostle for that because as we've been here, we have been receiving the training of God. As we've been going back and forth and other ministries have been a part of, I was seeking after those different things. But now that we're here, the teaching and the training that we've been receiving, every single day our lives are changed. Every single day learning something new. Every day operating in something different. And I've just been so amazed and I'm so thankful that God has led me here because I know this is the will of God. And I'm excited for the rest of the ministers, all the people around the world, all the missionaries. I have family members who went to done missions and they've had to come back. They couldn't afford it. And I wish that they knew about this and would come here because they could come here and fulfill the will of God. We, Apostle Taylor rescues people from sex slave trafficking, from people on the streets, builds homes up, people does outreaches to every single part of the world. And if they would just come here and, and know that, then they could walk in the will of God for their lives. So, Tony, let me ask you this question. You know, this, this is a question that we get asked a lot. You know, on staff, people will come. But can you imagine doing anything else? No, absolutely not. I look back at my life. And at the time, I honestly felt like I had everything I had ever wanted. We had a contract in front of us. We were doing everything we wanted. And I look back, even though I gave it up then, I look back and I said, that is nothing now. I look back and say, I can make that decision in a second now. I do not see my life outside of this movement of what God is doing here. I do not say one thing. There's no, there's no, I don't, there's no end to this. There's no leaving this ministry. Not, it's because Jesus is here. God is here. He's through Apostle Taylor. And I can't even imagine or vision doing anything else because I've done, I've been able to walk in greater than anything I have, no matter else, everywhere else I've been. Amen. Let's give Tony a great big God bless you.